Hello, thanks for joining us on the news. I'm Ruth Aguele. We're streaming live on Vision TV 247 and all the social media platforms displayed on the screen right now. I'm Ruth Aguele. My sign language interpreter is John Bamedeli. Let's bring you the headlines. President Tinubu calls for accountability as revenue mobilization and physical commission gets new commissioner. New World Economic Forum report calls for dynamic approach to economic growth. And INEC begins assessment of political parties, visits LP for physical verification. President Bola Tinubu has sworn in Ambassador Desmond Akawo as the new Commissioner of the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Physical Commission. The new Commissioner took oath of office shortly before the commencement of the first meeting of the Federal Executive Council at the State House. Ambassador Akawo, who is an experienced diplomat and administrator, was a Commissioner for Water Resources and Rural Development in River State. The present administration has declared intention for radical change in infrastructure development. The commissioner says he is aware of the importance of revenue mobilization towards the actualization of developmental aspirations. Is that we still have quite a lot to extract from our blue economy. We have a lot to extract from the solid mineral. Uh, the mono economy that we have today is not comfortable. Of course, it will not be abandoned, but these two new areas, as well as culture and tourism, I believe my contribution will really help in making sure that our revenues are shored up. To other issues, a new World Economic Forum report released Wednesday calls for a new approach to economic growth, a new framework that views GDP alongside quality of growth. The approach calls for a balance between long-term sustainability and equity. Hamman Jabani has more on other initiatives and announcement at Davos 2024. A report released by the WEF host of the 54th annual conference in Davos, Switzerland, says women spend a quarter more of their lives suffering from poor health than men. The report indicates that this disparity includes an unequal focus on men across medical research, diagnosis, and treatment. Closing this gap will boost the global economy by $1 trillion annually by 2040. According to the report, a 1.7% increase in per capita GDP is driven by women. WEF said the gender health gap causes around 75 million years of lives lost due to poor health annually, equating it to a week per woman every year. The forum announces the launching of a global alliance for women's health with $55 million pledged for women's health. Meanwhile, the World Economic Forum has signed an agreement with the state of Qatar to establish Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution. The sideline of the forum, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with United Nations Secretary General Antony Guterres and discussed the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Gaza, including the life-saving humanitarian work by UNRWA and acknowledge the partnership between the United States and the United Nations. Most important is I'm just very grateful on behalf of the United States for the Secretary General's leadership and uh, for the United Nations uh, because um, if we didn't have it, um, we, as we could say, we would have to invent it um, because of the extraordinary work that members of uh, the, the UN team are doing around the world every day and no more so than in the UN chief and world leaders of France, Argentina and Spain delivered speeches at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting on a variety of issues. Climate and AI are exhaustively discussed by governments, by the media and by leaders here in Davos. And yet, we have not yet an effective global strategy to deal with either. And the reason is simple. Geopolitical divides are preventing us from coming together around global solutions for global challenges. Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Tuga, participated in a session titled Securing an Unsecured World. Nigeria, you mentioned, is, is, is a large country. It is the, the most populous country uh, on the continent, on the African continent. 
It has a population of 220 million people. It's going to be 400 by the year 2050. Uh, it belongs in a UN Security Council, for instance. And there are several other uh, key decision-making bodies. With or without <coughs> NATO power? Permanent yeah. seat. <laughs> we are but no more veto powers, huh? Uh, we, we should we should do away with the, with the veto powers. <laughs> when you look at the the global security architecture, it is impacted upon by such um, undemocratic uh, entities that influence uh, decisions. Again, you um, have a situation where in the past, when we had a bipolar uh, world, we had neutral ground for uh, diplomats to engage for diplomacy to be allowed to resolve issues, to preempt conflicts and diffuse them. We don't have that anymore. Experts and policymakers will take up issues like ensuring a sustainable Middle East and North America, working on crackdown on plastic waste and the search for ways to maintain life on Earth amid growing threat to biodiversity. Hamad Jabani, NTA News. By 2050, estimates indicate that the global economy will double in size and will serve, as a, will serve a population of over 10 billion people. In this context, improving energy efficiency is critical to delivering an affordable, secured and climate-aligned future. Now, what can companies and government do to promote economic growth with less energy featured predominantly at the ongoing World Economic Forum. Let's hear from Charles Alpha. Energy efficiency. A long-term strategy for climate, nature, and energy. It's one of the core themes being discussed at the ongoing World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos. Leaders gathered at the forum are discussing how to develop a long-term systematic approach to achieve the objective of a carbon-neutral and nature-positive world by 2050 through the provision of affordable, secure and inclusive access to energy, food and water. The forum's community is helping to meet these global goals and play a critical role in reviving momentum in the UN Sustainable Development Goals since its launch in 2020. It has raised almost $43 million to support early stage entrepreneurs with solutions to critical challenges such as fresh water shortages, ocean degradation, deforestation, as well as biodiversity loss. These include protecting more than 56 million hectares of national habitats and the treatment of more than 350 million liters of wastewater. Professionals at the ongoing World Economic Forum say setting the world on a path to reaching climate targets while enabling growth and fostering energy, food and water security requires a rapid transition away from fossil fuels to renewables, improving energy efficiency and cutting all greenhouse gas emissions. Governments got it at the end, uh, many governments, that if, if I want to secure my energy system, I have to use less energy plus high energy prices might have been another uh, driver. So what do we need to do now? So first of all, I am a big fan of standards. We have to have standards of the, uh, the equipment we use at home for industry, the, the motors, uh, for the cars and others. There should be standards, first of all, uh, uh, set and then monitored and implemented. Over the past 50 years, the climate crisis has caused more than 2 million deaths and $4.3 trillion in economic losses, according to the United Nations, as well as the destruction of vital natural ecosystems. It is only going to get more intense and is having an impact on access to the most vital of human resources, that is food and water. Ch Charles Alpha there. President Emmanuel Macron seeks to add new life into his final term with a promise for a stronger and fairer France. Macron gave the indication at a rare news conference with a string of announcements aimed at forging greater civic responsibility and security over three years of his second and final term. Here is Charles Arthur again. 
President Macron has been at some disadvantaged position in recent weeks after a series of crises and a growing challenge from the far right. Last week, he announced a new cabinet with a pronouncement tilted to the right with the naming of Gabriel Attal, 34, as France's youngest ever prime minister and followed this with his first full-scale domestic press conference in half a decade. He announced a trial that could lead to school uniforms becoming compulsory in the next two years and all children should learn France's national anthem, L.A. Marcellus. He also unveiled an idea for all school children to take drama courses. Macron said he is convinced that as a nation they have the basis to succeed. This he told reporters gathered under the chandeliers of the LEC Palace. The French president is optimistic that the younger generation will live better tomorrow than the way today is lived. Watched by his new cabinet team, France will be stronger if we are more united, if we relearn to share values, a common culture, respect in the classroom, in the streets, in public transport and in shops, said Macron. Charles Alpha, NT News. China's population registered a fall last year for the second consecutive year. The country's population started shrinking in 2022 for the first time in six decades, losing its tag of the world's largest populated nation. Here is Charles Offer one more time. The data by China's National Bureau of Statistics shows that the birth rate in the world's second largest population hit a new low while the death rate hit a peak not seen in more than a half a century, according to the South China Morning Post. Report says the overall population in mainland China fell by 2.08 million last year to 1.4097 billion, down from 1.4117 billion in 2022. The Hong Kong-based Daily said, citing official figures. The number of new babies born last year was 9.02 million, down by 5.6% from 9.56 million in 2022. The falling number of new babies last year resulted in the lowest birth rate since records began in 1949, with 6.98 births for every 1,000 people, compared with 6.77 in 2022. China's National Bureau of Statistics also registered a growth of 5.2% in gross domestic product last year to hit 126 trillion yuan, that is $17.6 trillion. Charles Alpha, NT News. Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris Malagi, has charged the governing council of the Nigerian Institute of public relations to promote professionalism and excellence among members of the institute. The minister also reiterated the need to partner with the government at the federal, state and local levels to contribute to the growth and development of the country. Hamman Jabani reports that 24 new members were also inducted into the institute. The inauguration of the Governing Council of the Nigeria Institute of Public Relations 2023-2025 to elected on the 28th August 2023 is in line with the provision of the Act Cap N114 Laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria which establishes the Institute as the nation's only professional body charged with the responsibility to regulate the practice and development of public relations in both public and private sectors in Nigeria. It is in the light of this that the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris Malagi, deemed it right to inaugurate the Governing Council to perform its duties and to use the body of knowledge in the Institute to create and to come up with relevant programs and activities to promote better understanding of the eight-point agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu administration. I fully understand the importance of reputation for the Federal Minister of Information and National Orientation and for the country as a whole. And our reputation is very important and dear, not just for all of us as professional colleagues, but for our country as a whole. The NIPR should design, in conjunction with government, communication strategies that would drive the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Chinubu. 
president and chairman of council, Ike Inyeleaku, says the institute is moving towards a new dawn and that the transformation of programs outlined will help in that direction. And recently we have written to NDAs, various agencies of government, departments, to draw the attention to the condition of the act. Because we believe it will help us in recruiting and improving the educational capital of our various organizations at the state. The president also inducted 24 new members of the institute. I hereby declare you, according to your ranks, members of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. And I believe my membership of this institute will expose me more to this network and uh, will also expose me to relevant literature that will help in shaping the work we are doing. And uh, so I consider it an, uh, a very immense step and uh, a very helpful one, which would, uh, in no small measure, actually uh, change or improve the work we are doing. The Institute assures the federal government of its support to better the lives of Nigerians. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. To promote healthy living and wellness among the workforce, Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation has put up a sensitization seminar on optimizing health and wellness for improved productivity. Now, this is for officers in the Federal Civil Service. This is in line with Pillar 6 of the Federal Civil Service Strategy and Implementation Plan, which aims at enhancing the value proposition for civil servants Aman Jabani will tell us more. The commitment of the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation to the well-being of the workforce is not just a policy statement, but a moral obligation with an established employer's wellness center, among other initiatives dedicated to enhancing the health and well-being of workers. To cascade it, 500 civil servants, 10 each from MDAs, have been trained on promoting healthy living and wellness among the workforce. Permanent Secretary, Service Welfare Office, Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Mamu Adankambari, says the role civil servants play are pivotal and their well-being is of importance to the success of the collective endeavors as a government. Hence, the training will give them knowledge on healthy living and preventive measures against occupational-related disorders. Non-communicable disease has become a global public health challenge, casting a shadow on health and efficiency of our workforce. This challenge is further compounded by the stress and sedentary nature of civil service work. Today, we are gathering not just to discuss the challenges, but to actively seek solutions and strategy to overcome them. We are also going to give them tips, the HR leaderships, to look at how to start and implement wellness programs in the organization. What is the benefit of this? When an employee is assured of the organization being concerned about their well-being, it's going to boost their morale and it's going to improve their psychological contract to that organization. Some of the participants speak on their expectations. And I expected that this kind of program shouldn't just be a long ranger. There should be a lot of programs that will complement this from the same office or from other offices. We hope the federal government will help us in providing uh, means of rid getting rid of these uh, health issues. The sensitization centered on mental health and resilience in the workplace, preparing for retirement and work-life balance, hypertension and overall well-being among others. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. On politics, National Executive Committee of the Labour Party has resolved to pursue electoral reforms to address some of the challenges that played out in the 2023 general elections. The NEC meeting also played host to the verification team of the Independent National Electoral Commission at the National Secretariat in Abuja. David Ayre will tell us about that. The first NEC meeting of the year 2024 is reviewing activities in the outgone year and setting agenda on how to sustain the winning tempo of the party in the new year. The party sees a review of the Electoral Act as key in the quest to have a system where every step is transparent and devoid of technicalities that could encourage manipulation in an election. Nigeria will not be able to advance politically except we continue to engage the mass of the people 
continue to educate the people because we feel very strongly that political education is key to the emancipation of Nigerians. And therefore, the Labour Party is going to spearhead political education across. Addressing the name of issues on a verification visit, the chairman presented the party's call card in the 2023 general election and other details as requested by the electoral body. Nigerians, before now, we are yearning for a top force political party in Nigeria. And I'm sure that Labour Party played that role effectively. And today, uh, Labour Party can be said to be the third force in Nigeria. The party calendar and guidelines for the 2024 Edo governorship election was adopted by the meeting with a pledge to take over the state through the ballot. In Abuja, David Ayre, NTA News. From the judiciary, the Supreme Court has reserved judgment in an appeal filed by Saidu Umar of the People's Democratic Party, challenging the victory of Governor Ahmed Aliyu in the 2023 Sokoto state governorship election. The appellant filed the appeal against the governor's victory at the election petition tribunal and court of appeal prompting his move to the apex court for redress. He alleged that Governor Ahmed Aliyu and his deputy Idris Gobir used forged certificates to contest the 2023 election and that election irregularities occurred in 138 polling units. However, the courts below dismissed these claims for being inconsistent. The Supreme Court also reserved judgment in the appeal of Professor Yahaya Sani of the NNPP, challenging Governor Kefas Abu's victory in the Taraba governorship election. Before approaching the Apex Court, the Court of Appeal had ruled that Professor Yahaya was not clear about what he wanted the court to do for him, thereby dismissing his claims. The two governorship matters are part of the election-related appeals currently before the Apex Court for adjudication. More from the judiciary, Justice Mohammed Ahmed Ramat of the Federal High Court Abuja Division has been elevated to the Court of Appeals bench. The elevation of the judicial officer to the Intermediate Court followed the oath of office which the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ulukayode Ariwola, administered on him in Abuja. Justice Ariwola emphasized the importance of judicial officers conducting themselves within the confines of the law and upholding the solemn oath administered on them. He urged Justice Mohammed Ramat to remain vigilant against veiled temptations, emphasizing the preservation of his reputation and integrity as imperative at all times. Let's turn to other issues. The Rector General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, has described the explosion direct an area in Ibadan as tragic and a mon monumental loss. The NEMA boss stated this in Ibadan while on a sport assessment of the site of the explosion. Let's hear from Eliasu Yakubu. The DG Nema, who was received at the site by Oyo State Governor Sheyi Makinde, alongside other government officials, said all arrangements have been concluded to provide relief items to alleviate the sufferings of the victims. He said Nema has since deployed its search and rescue team to the affected area for possible rescue of some victims who may be under the rubbles of the explosion. Regulatory bodies must all sit up where we have people keeping piles of explosive in a residential area is not acceptable disaster management is everybody's business if you see something you say something the state governor thanked the federal government and NEMA for the swift response. Governor Markinde said investigation into the remote and immediate cause of the explosion have commenced with a view to identifying the culprits. Preliminary investigation revealed that three persons died and more than 70 others injured, with many houses, cars and other property destroyed following the explosion. From Ibadan, Oyo State, Ilya Suryakubu, NTA News. 
In keeping with the present administration's renewed hope mantra, there is need for effective management and utilization of the nation's water resources. Former Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Water Resources and Sanitation, Didi Esther Walson Jack, disclosed this while handing over affairs of the ministry to the incoming Permanent Secretary, Ali Ushin Kafi, urged management and staff to continue being dedicated and hard working. She highlighted some of the accomplishments and milestones achieved under her leadership, crediting them to the team's expertise, professionalism and relentless spirit. While expressing confidence in the ministry's management and staff, she encouraged them to extend the same cooperation to the incoming permanent secretary. To even more significant accomplishments. Leo Shinkafi assumed office as permanent secretary of the ministry. The new acting Comptroller General, Nadron Agricultural Quarantine Service, Dr. Godwin Audu, says the service will enforce policies that will make export of agricultural produce easier for exporters. He stated this at a handover ceremony by the agency's pioneer Comptroller, Dr. Vincent Isegbe, at the expiration of his tenure in accordance with the um, Quarantine Establishment Act. Dr. Aldo promised to implement ease of doing business in line with the Presidential Enabling Environment Council effort within the export environment. He noted that the quarantine is committed to enhancing the export environment by expediting inspection and certification services, streamlining application, application processes, and automating quarantine procedures. These efforts aim to significantly make life easier for agro-exporters and reduce the processing time for agricultural export documentation. All right, let's bring you Thursday's weather forecast. And that concludes the news. Thank you for your time. I'm Ruth Aguele. My sign language interpreter is Bamidili John. Bye.